went to LA and uh, discovered a, di a new world, a different world. I love science fiction. Every day is going to have good and bad, and you pick what you want. Which one? <laughs>
or the, Kyushu or anything like that. He probably visited because it was it was just one mission. It's what you know the area of service, uh, and he, he was stationed as I said in Sapporo and Kanazawa and a few other places. I don't know all the details, but a lot of it was in Tokyo as well. So where I'm trying to get back to the story of mm -hmm. Fort Belvoir mm -hmm. was he'd come to Japan. He knew Japanese, so he was a service person in the time of the Korean conflict, but he was in Japan learning Korean, getting ready to go and serve. The, the need at the time was in Korea, and because of his language and culture skills, they trained him in Korean language. Was he but in it was, based, what was, it was his, based in Tokyo. But what was his feel when in the military? Was he an intelligent? Yes, and, right, he, and, he, and so he never told us about it. He couldn't. Yeah, he, was he never technology. really told us about it. But he you know it was it was intelligent something okay, yeah, something yeah. So in that stuff there. Okay. And he finally got to Korea the last day of the war, so he never was fighting, and he never he said I never had to fire my rifle in anger, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but he was in, in Korea doing his work there, and he would speak to people, and they would answer him in Japanese because, of course, at the time everyone spoke Japanese. And they say, "So why are you speaking to me in Japan Korean. Japanese when I'm talking in Korean?" He says, "Because your Korean stinks of Japanese." That's <laughs> what they told him, and, and that sounds negative, but it was more of a joke right, right. in terms of what they told him. So, so he was in the army. Right. My old, I'm the second child. He was of how many kids? Of of uh, nine kids. You wait. You're I'm number two of nine. Of nine. Yes. Yeah. We we're all still here, and basically it was a two year gap, okay. except okay. for in the joking. middle. Okay. In the middle, there was all miscarriage, right. and one one there was three years gap. Okay. So you know we can do the math. Your there. mom and dad yeah. still alive? My father's moved on. He okay. moved on in I think uh, oh eight. Mm -hmm. There. Mm -hmm. My mother's kicking. That's She's in eighty nine. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, eighty nine. And she that's also good. was the the last child uh, of of eight of, large, of eight, of eight okay. and seven boys and a girl finally. So what did he? What, what kind of work did your father do? He was. Uh, we always tell the story that he got his degree in chemistry, okay. and he worked as a chemist for a while. And mm -hmm. then they were looking for a chemical engineer, and mm -hmm. they said, "Oh, I can do that." So he then worked as a chemical engineer. Mm -hmm. There was a steel plant in town, and you know, so he worked at various engineering there. And the next place needed an engineer, and so okay, we, we'll take you. And, and then he spent most of his time with with Lockheed, doing aeronautical engineering work. Okay. So he kind of. Morphed his way through that. He used to wear a t shirt that says, I am a rocket scientist. There you go. Because that's exactly who he, he was. Did. So, he when was. you were growing up, what kind of interest did you have mm. growing up? Because you grew up in Utah. Yep. So, a very strong religious background. Yeah. Family, family was stuff. there. It was really very good. strong. Because that's one thing I've always admired about Mormon, the Mormon religion. And I went through all seven lessons. Okay. Yeah. I went through all seven lessons. Yeah, I think the numbers changed depending on the it's, time. It just changed. It, it sure did. Yeah, I think so. we talked about that. It yeah. did change. But I went through all seven lessons because I admired the way every Mormon family I'd met, mm. and I knew quite a few, and they even let me go over to the church, but not into the main section. Okay. I went over there, the one that's right over here in Oh, Hino. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure okay. did. Yeah. The section was just brand new built. The section that was built, the yeah. new section, over there, that old section, they allowed visitors mm -hmm. to come into, but you couldn't go into the main hall. Well, mm. I'm going to tell you about <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. um, so in Hiro, there's the two buildings. One is a temple. Mm -hmm. Which is as maybe I'm guessing that's what you're calling the main hall, the, right, right, the more the sacred temple. area right. where you, you have to be a Mormon to go into. Well, and even yet you have to have a recommend, even if you're a Mormon, you've got mm -hmm. to like you know, follow the rules, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Being a card carrying, literally, I guess, to get it. And then there's the uh, regular chapel right. next to it. And I went to the They've recently of times. redone that. That chapel has been rebuilt now, yes. and that is open and in use. It's where I go every Sunday. The, the temple proportion has also been redone. So we're just waiting for the end of this COVID, the right timing for a rededication. And before the rededication, there's going to be an open house. Now what you said, when so you said everyone, redone, when you mean redone, you mean what they did was they actually restructured, they refurbished it because they didn't do anything to the outside. Right. It's a refurbishing. Right. And, and the, fa the feeling from the church perspective is we dedicate it. This is the house of worship to God. And so that's why I say we dedicate it again. Mm -hmm. uh, and once that happens, then it's a sacred space with limited access. Until then, the public is going to be able to go in. 
So within the next six months, there should be an open house. And if you want to see the rest of it, I would love to. it's going to be open to everybody. I would love to. Let me ask you this stuff. Sure. So, when you're growing, so when you're growing up, what kind of sports, what yeah, kind yeah. of activities did you have? I'll get back to um, did You, you know, I was, I was a skinny little runt that didn't do a lot. I was always so embarrassed I was so skinny. Your legs? I didn't do anything. Your legs? My, my legs and my ribs, you could just play oh, a really? tune. And I, you wouldn't know now. Okay. So I never was involved with group sports because you took off yeah. your shirts and I was too embarrassed. Okay. And I played a little here and there. Okay. Um, but when I came to something, I didn't really do a lot of organized sports. I was more into reading and whatnot. And okay. I played the baritone for a number of years. I kind you of, play, I, baritone I, sax? It's, it's not sax. Baritone the, the, the euphonium is euphonium. another way. It's like a mini tuba. Okay. And it's been many years since I played. And then in high school, Kind of want to hang out with the folks. I was in. I was on the cross country team for a while, and okay. you know, didn't doing what running. running okay. I didn't do a heck of a lot, but okay. I did. And then we moved because we moved here and there all over the place. But stay within Utah, though. Actually, no. Um, I was born in Virginia, came to Utah, Provo. Then my dad finished college. We were up in the Salt Lake area where he was working for Hercules with firing rocket motors. Then in in uh, fourth grade, we moved to California. Okay. It was with Lockheed. Right. And so we were in the Bay Area when San Jose was Prune Orchards. Okay, uh, yes. On the east side, Milpitas wow. area there. And I was there through, halfway through ninth grade. Okay. And yeah. so that's kind of, that was where I did uh, cross country in the, the, the east side hills there, okay. San Jose. Yeah. Right. Uh, then they moved back to Provo. And he was with still work, same work, Hercules. He came right. back. We were in Provo, I say back, but you know, it was too Provo for me. And the last year of junior high and then high school was there, so formative years. And I hung with the guys, but everyone has developed. They, I mean, these were big kids who have been playing football forever, right? And I wasn't gonna do much there. But I would sometimes run on my own a little, but uh, we, I'd hang out, we'd go to the weight room together, and so I'd do my weights and they'd do theirs and I'd be pushing my, my toothpicks, you know, just doing whatever. Uh, and so I hung out and I was with the football team. But it was more, I did photography, I did ceramics. Okay. Uh, that's, when was craft, that's when they had craft classes. Yeah, they had, I did craft classes. They sure did. And they also had ROTC. Yes. And that was, so I was in ROTC at a time when it wasn't very popular to do Vietnam, ROTC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I didn't do it. much sports. It and was then, more. So what did you study in college? And then in college, uh, because what we, when, I, when, well, let me go back a little bit. Sure. Because you didn't get involved with team sports and stuff and you really were reading a lot, what kind of books did you really like to read? I loved science fiction. Did I you really? Fiction. That's my favorite. Yeah, I just love science Well, although to the, one of the earliest, not earliest memories, but my go-to set was really Lord of the Rings. Right. That was kind of science, jun junior right, high school fantasy, area yeah. and then the fantasy. and then right. So I read every one of the Steinbeck books I could find. So it wasn't just... It wasn't, it wasn't just sci fi. I would go to the library and just get a bunch of books and I'd come home and I'd read them. Uh, then later on in school, my friends were in bands, so I was hanging out with them and I was like the roadie. I was a skinny kid, but I was like carrying the, the columns around and doing things. Lost my hearing that way, probably. Um, hanging out with the musical types. Um, got into choir and sang with them. Um, so that's kind of the progression. I had, didn't keep up with music afterwards. I kind of feel sad. After what, high school? After high school, yeah. Okay. Or even the final year. I, I, did, I did ROTC in the first three years, and it was in a hot popular place, but we dressed up in our uniforms. And then my senior year, I really feel bad because the, the lieutenant colonel running the program, this is high school, there weren't a lot of high school ROTCs. He's a great guy. But my senior year, I wanted to hang with my mates. And so I said, hey, I, I can't take it. I've got to join acapella with my friends. And I remember now his fallen face. Oh, because like, he really liked you and liked that yeah, you were and really he, good and he's gonna, and, He and, trained you and, and everything. They, yeah. they trained me, and I think they got, the, what's the right word, not decommissioned, because that's not a personal thing, but the school, they just couldn't keep up. Keep with the people, keep, none of the people seeing So he stayed, kept teaching, but it was no longer an official program. And so kind of like, I feel like I, let them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them there. So, but what did you get into in when you went to college? What, what subject did you start? Then, uh, I started with just kind of I don't I I don't remember what I declared. But what I'm getting to is I was there for a semester that I went on my mission as a missionary. So you were 18. 
When you went on your uh, mission? 19. 19. 19. 19. Okay. But when you'd studied something in college, but you nothing well, that then you, I, well, you so, no but, but it shifted. I don't remember. I think maybe I was thinking pre-med and microbiology oh. or something. Because when I came back, I did that as well. I don't remember before, but okay, post-mission, I came back and I was pre-med, microbiology, and did all the, the basic science stuff. Um, I didn't stay there, but that's kind of where I started. What mission did you go? Where did, where I was in Japan you? Sapporo mission. So I came to did Japan. You, did you, but could you, in those days, could you, put, could you put in where you wanted to go? No, even you now. Still you, you, be, you, you still can't. It, it never, still well, you, you can say whether you're interested in foreign language or whatnot, but at the end of the day, it's, they look at still aptitude still a little bit, but it's where, still does, a where does the Lord want you to be? That's right. I hear what you. are you going to get? Who needs you there? And, and for me, it was formative. I, mean, I came to Japan. Then I went back, and how long, how long it's, it's a, a longer, long it's a two-year mission. Two years, okay, right. When my dad came, it was three because there was no language; it was just thrown in deep end and do. But did um, you get language before you went? There's a, a two months training program. Now they have that. Yeah, now they have that, and so it's two months of immersive, intensive immersive in whatever the language, language, whatever language you're doing, and it's in. Mission Training Center. I, I think it used to be called the Language Training Center, but they teach more than just language about being a missionary and the whole bit. Uh, and they've got the center in Provo. And so I did that for two months and then came to Japan. And I've always been kind of grateful it was uh, Sapporo because you are, uh, you speak Hyojungo, you speak Spanish. Not that there's, I, I love dialects, but if you're just learning, it's kind of good to start. You went to the, basic. you went the basics, basics, yeah. And you also don't have a lot of foreigners around to kind of get in the way. <laughs> to distract you. To distract you, to That's speak right. English, whatever else. So you really had no choice. And it's a good, good language, and so it gave me a good base. And I did the missionary work, and it was wonderful, and there's you know, various stories, this and that and the other. You read and write as well? Um, that kind of came later. Okay. But yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I ended up in going back um, to Brigham Young University for about a year, and then I went to Los Angeles for a summer. To do what? To find a good job. I thought I could find a good paying job in Los Angeles. But this is after you graduated from college? No, no this, okay. was, this was while I was going to school. I just okay. said, take a summer. Um, I was teaching language actually at the Mission Training Center. It was kind of what I did. Studying Japanese and then all the math and whatnot on the side for my pre-med thing. I uh, went to LA and uh, discovered a, di a new world, a different world. Uh, one that had... Um, well, my wife-to-be, I met her in Los Angeles. And then during that time? During the summer, I went there, and I, this, I thought I would get this good-paying job. I, I never really did. Mm -hmm. I ended up working as a teller at Sumitomo Bank in Little Tokyo. Okay. And after Thank my teller know. hours, wow. I walked around Little Tokyo, and there was this pastry shop selling Japanese-style pastries with a uh, cute young girl behind the counter that I talked to and okay. got to know her and started dating. And then said, well, maybe I don't need to go back to Provo, Utah. I'm just going to stay here. Was that your wife? That became my wife, yeah. You've got to be kidding no, me. No, I'm not. So, so I met her, and then I... Well, what was she doing, first of all, in the she U.S.? Was, so she came to the U.S. to uh, study English. Okay. And was blessed. I guess there's a lot of blessings. I believe in blessings. She was able to transition, found a sponsor, and then stayed and studied afterwards. So she was studying at the Glendale Community College. Okay. And I met her, and she wasn't from the church background or anything, a different little world right, and a right. different world for me. And, and I've kind of looped around, but I you know, experienced a little broader space of life than mm -hmm. I did when I was just in Provo. Uh, and said I don't need to go back to university, which is kind of crazy because I was... You know, I was, I was doing the pre-med, I was 4-0, I was, everything was going good. Wow. But I had no concept at the time of GPA, of scholarship. It, I just didn't even think about it. It was a different world back then. So I stayed and I started guiding tours for the Japanese tourists that would come. And we'd take just so you could be around her? Well, yeah, I mean, around her, but I, that was my life now. I, was, I, I moved on. Okay. And I was... Uh, <coughs> now, uh, during this time, had you guys made yourselves girlfriend, boyfriend by that time? Yeah, we, we were. I, I was still looking around a little bit. Okay, but right. basically, we'd, we'd connected. You connected. Right. And uh, I was doing... 
I mean, I'm doing tour guides and all these Japanese people come, and so you get to know a lot of folks, right? Um, but you go to Disneyland or you go to Knott's Berry Farm or you go to Tijuana or whatever it is. And I did that for a while, and then suddenly, well, it wasn't just because my wife and to be were getting closer, but I was realizing I really should finish university. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, working as a teller at the bank it's fun, was, uh, was okay. But then, and the, the uh, tour guide was good business when you were doing tours, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it was very you know, on-off kind of business. Um, so I thought, it doesn't really matter what I do. I called up UCLA, I said, hey, I want to transfer down. And then they said, well, okay. It was an easier world back then. I couldn't, I don't know if I'd get into UCLA now, but yeah, I'd say, yeah, my grades are good and whatnot and doing these things. And I said, what are you, so, oh, I'm pre-med. So, oh, we don't accept pre-med transfer students. And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, I'm Japanese. And it was, that was the kind of decision. Okay. Because I'd always said, I don't want to be a Japanese major and go to business school. Okay. For whatever reason, I just had this prejudice. Okay. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. So I moved from to, to Los Angeles, finished my university studies in Japanese studies, and because I spoke the language, it's fairly good. I, I graduated 11th in my class of like 6,000, right. uh, and I had, but I got a good base in sciences and you know, chemistry and all these things and poli sci. So I had a fairly broad because I was the pre med before, right? right? right, right. And so it wasn't just language arts; it, it was mm, right. broad, which really helped later in life, but. When we graduated, by this time we, I had proposed, and of course my wife came to Japan, uh, fourth of fourth of four girls uh, from Nikko, okay. traditional father who was a stonemason, you know, doing okay. the stone blocks right, for like right. Toshogu and all these things, and had the, uh, you know, the right. decorated shoulder and the whole bit, uh, okay. kind of traditional family. It was like, well, you can go to Japan, but don't be bringing some blue-eyed guy back <laughs> with you, okay? You, you, right. Right? right? And we were going together, and she was graduating. She was at Glendale, and I was at UCLA, and we were graduating at the same time. And you know, I called said, I'm coming home. And of course, they could figure out what's going on. So you coming home alone? No. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, bring him over. So I remember very well going to visit her family in Nikko that first day. And I'm you know, not quite sure what to expect from this traditional guy. but. He'd such, the parents were such a salt of the earth, wonderful people. By the end of the evening, you know, they said, I remember sitting there relaxed and, and at the tatami floor, so you want to marry my daughter? And I'm like, like yeah. And my wife like stops it. And so I, I sit up on, on my, uh, uh, hi, hi, <laughs> yes. Uh, and he said, okay. Right, so he said, we've always said that we're going to support our children in marrying who they want to marry. And so that, that's the kind of folks they were, okay. right? And they said, so, okay, I will sign. Mm. And it turned out that we were, one, we were very close. We would go up there all the time on weekends. Is he we, still we, around? Is he still here? No, he's been gone for almost 30 years now. Okay. What right? about the mother? And she just passed last year. Sorry last year. But we would come up all the time, and we were close, and so, so great people. And in fact, some of the family, traditional family members had problems with this foreigner. And, and and you know, my my father father in law wouldn't none of that just shut him out. So well, well at first I was in Utah, then I came to Provo, and then we were together for a while, and we would visit on weekends. Okay. I was did, she, did she I was decide to, to accept the faith and Mormonism? No, she, no. She still isn't. She still is not. She still is not. <laughs> so we've kind of walked the this, this parallel <laughs> path. In so fact, you're being very respectful of her beliefs, and she's being respectful of yours, and you do Well, that. yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of wandered kids? around a little bit, and okay. then came back and realized that actually this is something very meaningful to me, and that I have a lot of faith in, and so I kind of seen the world and decided this is the world I want. And my little ones, when they were real little, it was not the world they were in, but from, well, really from their memories, I was taking the church. And so my older two, my, old, my oldest daughter, I only have one that's married. My daughter's married. She was married in the temple, as they say, a church marriage. To a Mormon? Yeah. So she's kind of been there. Um, she's on, in New York on Broadway, and in that world, in that environment, you know, it, there's a lot of different perspectives. And so she's you know, like working through those. Um, but is she, she's Mormon. She's accepted she, them. She, she, she is. Well, she was... 
married in the temple, so to speak, so kind of card carrying these okay. things. Uh, I think her thinking maybe has broadened a bit recently, um, but still, yes. Okay. Her and her husband come yes. from the church background. My oldest boy was a missionary in, uh, in Malay speaking Singapore mission. So okay. he spent time in Borneo working with some of the, the local tribes and a little bit of time on Malaysia. Okay. Uh, he's still single, but he's in okay. New York and you know, going to church. My younger guy, 11 year gap, um, he's kind of grown up as a only child with, with four parents, right, effectively. Right, right, right. And um, he's, we went to church for a long time together, but now he's a little bit more independent thinking and where he, he thinks he wants to go. And for me, I'm, you know, of course, going to honor their choice and where they go, uh, just like with my wife, honor her. And she's the kind of the same way. She's like, well, she, she says, you've returned to the womb, <laughs> right? And that, there's some truth to that, to right. the, what I grew up and what I knew. And so I keep thinking someday she'll see the light, and she probably thinks someday I'll see the, the light, light, right? right? Of course, of course. Um, and we just try, we respect each other, and she's yes, just a wonderful. That's wonderful, so supportive uh, partner or spouse. What or did you study in college? Did, what did you do when you got out of college? What kind so, of So um, we finished with my Japanese major and what in the world are you going to do with that? Came to Japan together with my wife. Uh, came to Tokyo and said we got to do something. So I had my obligatory few months teaching English. I think everyone teaches English a little bit here. But I, I don't remember exactly where I got the idea. I wrote some letters around and I found a small Japanese company that said, hey, come on board. Uh, and so I was with a small Japanese company focusing on electronics. Um, uh, IC chips at the time was just getting going and board assemblies and printers and those kind of things. And it was a new technology area. So I did that for three years before I went to business school. Okay. Um, it was a small place and the the owner was my, my go-between for our, for our wedding and all these kind of things. He was a great guy. And so I went to, to get my MBA, went to business school, and then came back in, in the financial world and been there ever since. And so I started with securities, uh, some time in asset management, and now I'm more in the insurance world. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that's, that's three kids and it was, you know, your son, your daughter, then your son. You've had Everyone's all, made in Japan. All made me. in Japan. You've yeah. been here. So you've been here for a little while now. Altogether close to 30 years. 30 years, wow. Yeah. Do you ever see yourself leaving Japan? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but right now, my oldest daughter, her husband loves Japan, but she's not going to be living here. Her world is there. So it's kind of, I'm saying, it depends where the children end up. Right? Kind of where you want to be. Well, I, and all my aunts and will say, never go and live where the kids are because they'll move. Which is true. <laughs> and they don't do it out of spite. It's just their life takes them someplace else, right? But where is it going to be? I mean, ideally, it would be nice to have a house in both places and go back and forth. Be nice, yes. But my wife's mother just passed away. Our, our, our baby finished high school. So it was like, is it time to maybe say goodbye to Japan after all these years. And we really thought about that seriously this, just this past year. Your wife would want to leave too? What she's come to know is Utah. So she said, I'm, she said in some ways, Utah was kicking and screaming. It's not a place for a, a girl from Japan to want to go. But over the year, every summer we've been going back. Our two oldest kids went to Brigham Young University. So we've developed, she has developed an affinity for the area and for the people. My family, a lot of, well, some of them are centered there. My mother's still there. So it was like, if we're going to go someplace, we have a, we have a home. If we're going to go someplace, let's go to, uh, to Utah. Utah. Um, our youngest, you know, it wasn't the best year for school admissions. It was kind of tough last year with COVID in terms of, of things. Um, and he decided University of Utah works for him. He's doing computer science. They have a computer science with a entertainment arts and engineering emphasis. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an interesting twist. Mm -hmm. uh, they're well known for that. And so that's what he's doing. Um, and and we figured, okay, he's going to school. Do we want to be in Japan or not? I don't know. And I recently took on the role as country manager for a small uh, insurance focused consulting firm. So that's my my day-to-day -day job. job. 
on the side, uh, Stotsubashi EMBA program, I've been teaching a course this yeah, last yeah. time. Will it continue next year? We'll see what the students' feedback is. We'll find out. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's been interesting. Um, but the job came along, you know, and it, it was one specifically looking for gray hair and experience in Japan, so it was a good fit. Um, and I felt that, yeah, there's still a leg, still things to do here. My wife went to, she is in Utah, helicopter distance for my boy. She's in Utah? She's not she here? Is. Oh, you did tell me that. She's the, so so since since um, since early July, we kind of all went back together. I came back to take the new job, and uh, they were going to come back for Christmas, but COVID you know, kicked in, and so they, they're still there. Mm -hmm. She'll probably come back in February, is the current mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, ideally, she'd like to commute back and forth. But is she working while she's there? She you know, when people ask, do your wife work? I say, very hard. She's worked her whole life. That's for but sure. She's, 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 she's a, a stay-at-home stay stay mother, but uh, she's not, uh, but she works with all sorts of things and creative things, her mm -hmm. own things. But she has some final comments she'd like to share with us. Yeah, and I'm not trying to give any, if I, as soon as I try to pontificate, I trip over myself and it doesn't work. I'm not a pontificating kind Just of guy. But every day is going to have good and bad. And you pick what you want. Which one do you want to focus on? All right? You can't have just one or the other. Um, and for me, choose be, find what you're grateful for. And try to verbalize that. And then you find out there's a lot of things to be grateful for. And part of that is my faith and God and blessing and that. But you know, I think this is uh, word, hopefully words to live by. Uh, it brings a smile to your face and it brings a smile to other people's face because you're not prickly. And I can have my prickly moments like everyone else, particularly people who are taking my car stand. <laughs> you're not going to let that go. You're not letting that go. Doug, I want to thank you so much for this time. I really Thanks. Do. And I, I, really I almost it. wish I would have shut up so I could have had more questions and we could have, <laughs> enter, yeah, we yeah, could yeah, have uh, investigated interesting spots. But there it is. Okay. There, there's you, my man. life. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate All it. All of you watching this podcast, I want you to make sure you press like, subscribe, and never forget, it's all on loan. Continue to reach for the stars, and you're too blessed to be stressed. Thank <laughs> you.